Yeah, we're not going to go in our normal arrangement this week. It's rivalry week. We're going to do things weird. Let's get let's get off the charts and kick things off with the platypus trophy. All right, Oregon State and Oregon. We'll kick it off. It's going to be an awesome game. With a win, Oregon clinches a spot in the Pac-12 title game. They also can get in with an Arizona loss, but Arizona is probably unlikely to lose to Arizona State, but anything's possible. A couple of questions in this game. Question number one, can Oregon State effectively shrink the game? It was on display last week, at least there in the second half. Remember that drive that Oregon State went on, just a methodical Oh, gosh, it felt like a hundred plays, but just a methodical 10 minute drive basically just totally took the air out of the football and disrupted the rhythm of the Washington passing attack. Not that they needed a lot of help last week. It was raining sideways, but it disrupted the offensive rhythm. Right now, Bo Nix and company are playing with a ridiculous rhythm. So I'm not sure that Oregon State right now, looking at what they have, and I think they're pretty good rushing the quarterback. I think they're pretty good as far as getting after the passer, but Oregon's elite when it comes to protecting Bo Nix, and Bo Nix is elite when it comes to getting the ball out on time. I think the best way to defend them is by shrinking the game, by playing slow, by playing methodical, and then trying to create some big plays. That's question number two. Can Oregon State create some big plays in the game? Now, DJ Uyunglele has had a pretty good year. Those that have only watched last week will say, I don't know, you know, he looks the same to me. There have been a lot of progress made by DJ Uyunglele. I think he has decent receivers too in Silas Bolden and Anthony Gold. They have solid veilings as a solid option at tight end. We all know that it's going to run through the rushing game. Damian Martinez is going to be the bell cow. He's going to get a ton of totes. He's going to have a ton of opportunities. So they're going to try to effectively shrink the game by running it for sure. But maybe you got to be real cognizant of him pulling up and hitting a deep ball down the field. That's what Oregon State does. They marry up the run to the pass. They get you thinking it's all about the run. Those safeties get greedy. They come down to the box. Boom, you hit them over the top. And if you look at if you look at Oregon safeties, I do think they are a little greedy. I think they're good. I think they are a little greedy from time to time. And you can rock them to sleep with over and over and over again where they're having to fill and run support. So that's going to be really important. The other thing, can Oregon effectively run the football? It's a lot about the running game. A lot of people will talk about Bo Nix and the efficiency of the passing game. Totally accurate, totally fair. Big reason why Oregon's in the spot that they're in. But I still, and this might not be a popular opinion, but if you watch Bucky Irving, I think he's their best player. I still think he's their best player. I think he's that electric. He is so good. So good. When you look at what he can do in the open field and... If you look at Oregon State, I think they're vulnerable in the secondary. I do. But I do think they give a chance against the run. I think they have a chance to kind of slow things down, keep it in check, keep the ball in front of them, and keep Oregon from manufacturing some big plays. And then the other thing, too, will Oregon continue to do an excellent job in keeping Bo Nix upright? I think a lot of this will have to do with their offensive plan, how quickly they're going to get the ball out of his hands, how effectively they can run the football, how much they'll do some misdirection. All of those things could factor in. But Oregon's a, Oregon's a team that allows like half a sack a game. I mean, like we're talking like so far this year, like four sacks or somewhere abouts. Not a lot. Oregon State comes in averaging over three sacks per game. So they're a team that can flat out pin their ears back and come after you. They can get it done. So it's going to be very interesting to see who wins at the line of scrimmage because I do believe that this is a game that will come down to the line of scrimmage. You're going to see a lot of these games, by the way, here this weekend. While we talk about receivers and quarterbacks and great weapons on the perimeter, a lot of rivalry games are determined at the line of scrimmage. You are built to beat your rival. And that's where a lot of these games will come. As far as some trends are concerned, Oregon is 8-2 and two against the spread as a favorite in 2023. Oregon State is 11-3 and three against the spread as a road underdog since 2019. I think Oregon wins this one. They're operating with too much efficiency. I think that they can create some opportunities. With the weather, it was difficult to get a real assessment on where Oregon State's secondary is. I think they're better. I think they're okay. They're better than they were six, seven weeks ago for sure. But I don't think we have a real good indicator of just how much better they are. So I think Oregon handles Oregon State, and I think it'll be a good quality matchup, at least for a half. But ultimately, Oregon just has a little bit too much firepower, and they pull away as the game moves along. 